All right, so it's Saturday morning, and um, this is a really good opportunity for me to talk about something that's asked about often, which is heart rate, especially during workouts for POTS syndrome. We're about to do two different types of Metcons plus a 30 minute zone two thing. So you guys are gonna see how high my heart rate gets during this stuff or after this stuff, and then how low it gets. We'll get into an explanation of why it doesn't really matter at all. As you can see, my timer paused. That sucks, but it still tracks your heart rate. Got up to 174. Feel fine. So, I get so many questions from POTS people about heart rate, and sometimes I forget, like I try to empathize, but I forget that I was once there too. Um, I don't pay attention to heart rate during workout. Heart rate doesn't matter for a couple of reasons when it comes to POTS. Number one is that, so if you're somebody that's using the CHOPS protocol or something like that, or the Levine protocol, heart rate isn't, to me, it's not, I'm not a big fan of it because it's not super individualized, right? So like a heart rate zone can be different for different people, and the intensity at which you get there can be different for different people. That's why I don't put a huge emphasis all the time on it. Specifically, the biggest issue with heart rate for most people with POTS is that they're worried about high heart rates and sustaining them for a long time. Um, that was a high heart rate workout. It was six minutes long. This next piece that I'm doing is going to be a very high heart rate uh, workout for a extended period of time. I have four total sets of three rounds 
So three rounds of 10 calorie row, 10 bar facing burpees, three rounds of that, rest three minutes, and then three more sets of that. It's high heart rate, you have to sustain it for a long time. I won't be surprised if I'm in the 180s for the majority of the workout. And I'm not worried about it. We're kicking. Oop. Good feet, reflexes. Oop. Reflexes. Reflex. Oop. Still kicking. Oop. I'm only going to record that set and the last set. The two in the middle is going to be in the 170s the entire time. I promise you. All right. Hurry got up to the 180s. I'm going to record my last round of this set. It hasn't gone down, it's at 154 right now. Sorry, little camera error. Only got the burpees on the last set. Recorded. What was that? One, what was that 180? 178 on the last set. Breathing is the only thing that sucks right now. But that's to be expected. I'm gonna go cool down a bit. Put a different mic on while I do 30 minutes of zone two and talk to y'all. All right, camera one, camera two, check mic one, check mic two. I only have one mic on actually. Here's the content that you guys really came for. And that is heart rate. Well, I don't think it matters. I want to tell you guys you're super lucky because today I decided that I would track my heart rate for every individual piece that I did today, which is I did strength, I didn't actually record the strength piece like with the camera, but I recorded my heart rate for it. And then I recorded each individual Metcon, so two Metcons plus this. Um, I'm recording this right now. And this is supposed to be zone two, which is what I wanna to talk to you guys about right now. Zone two cardio would be categorized as low intensity to maybe slightly moderate intensity cardio. What's up? What's up? Sorry, just such a rude person came in and interrupted me. <laughs> Zone two cardio is something that I recommend to every POTS person to do. I think it's one of the most effective ways for somebody to get better in the short and long term and sustain fitness and reconditioning. Um, what I like to do for zone two is think about, can I have a conversation during my workout? Can I talk? How is my communication skills? How are my thinking skills, right? And right now my thinking skills aren't very good because I'm recovering still from that last workout, but at least I'm able to have a conversation. So, Zone two cardio, the heart rate model would say my heart rate should be at about like, I think like 120 to 135. I'm in the 136 zone, it dips to 125. If I go here, my heart rate's gonna go down to like, let's see, it'll gradually go down. This pace will stay the same, 133, yeah, it'll go down. So, there we go. In the next clip, I'm gonna show you guys the data for my workouts and talk about why I don't care about my heart rate, what it's doing, and, you know, the, the one question that I get asked often is, how long should my heart rate be elevated for? And how long after exercise should it be elevated for? And I'm gonna address that in the next clip too. I hope all this made sense. My brain is still recovering from that last piece and I got interrupted by the rudest person on earth. <laughs> all right, yo, so before my camera dies, I'm gonna explain to you guys exactly why I don't look at heart rate as something to pay too much attention to. I'm out here with my dog, that's why I'm outside. I, I, okay, look. A lot of people with POTS have this problem with heart rate. They think that, you know, heart rate is dangerous and like they have this hyper fixation on heart rate. But what I like to say to a lot of my clients that have POTS is that you're only fixated on it because you can tell that it's doing something, right? So for example, I could have somebody with POTS in my gym and somebody without POTS in my gym. Both of them could have a heart rate of 180 and the person without POTS probably has no idea so it doesn't cross their mind, nothing happens. The person with POTS, they feel the heart rate at 180, they check their watch, they hyper fixate on it and then they have anxiety over it and then all hell breaks loose in their mind and they start getting symptomatic. However, 
a lot of people with POTS in my experience limit themselves on the heart rate thing simply because they feel the heart rate thing, right? When they might not actually be symptomatic. So my advice is if you're not feeling symptomatic and your heart rate is high, don't stop what you're doing simply because the heart rate is high because your body needs to make the adaptations in order to handle and regulate that heart rate and even learn how to bring it down. So if you're fe- if you're not feeling symptomatic and everything is fine and you have to be honest with yourself in this instance too. Am I symptomatic or am I getting or am I getting anxious about where my heart rate is at because we have to acknowledge the anxiety portion of POTS. So many people with POTS, you know, and rightfully so, they they, they don't want to acknowledge the anxiety portion because doctors, you know, made them feel bad about it. However, I think it's really important to acknowledge that your anxiety is a symptom of your your symptoms from POTS, not the opposite way around. And once we can acknowledge that there is an anxiety component to it, then we can start having that battle as well and face that battle and do things to deal with it, right? Which is like exposure therapy. Like when you have a high heart rate, don't stop doing what you're doing. When you have symptoms, try to push through the symptoms and see if you can do it safely, of course. You know, see if you can do the things. So here are my heart rates from yesterday. Boom, number one workout, number two workout, number three workout, number four. I don't worry about it, dude, because I know that my body needs to make adaptations. I know that I'm safe. 180 is not a high heart rate. Uh, not like an incredibly high heart rate. And even if it is, I know that my body needs to make adaptations, you know, to be able to sustain that heart rate for a little bit longer and uh, to bring it back down. I actually encourage people with POTS to get their heart rate up high, you know, in safe ways so that they, their body can do the same. So anyway, that's the reason why I don't think it's of big concern and that you shouldn't really be concerned. You should be trying to get your heart rate up high. You should be training zone two cardio. Um, don't pay too much attention. POTS people seem to fixate on heart rate and if it's dangerous or not. If it's not dangerous, you know, there's this thing called interoception that I talk to a lot of my clients about, which is the fact that people with POTS are more hyper aware of what's going on inside their body than people without POTS. And I can get into a video about that. If you guys want me to, leave in the comment section below that that is what you would like. Leave in the comment section below exactly what you guys want me to touch on with POTS syndrome. Uh, I'm here to help. If you want to get in touch with me, jqfit1 at gmail.com is my email account. If you want to discuss coaching or see how I can be of some help, hit me up on Instagram at jqfitlife. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe to the channel. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.